Hi, I'm Scott Johnson from the Low Technology Institute, and today I'm going to talk about how to plant potatoes, the best methods based on a USDA-funded study we did with market gardeners here in southern Wisconsin. I get asked about potatoes all the time uh, because I talk about potatoes all the time. I argue that they're one of the most important foods for locally uh, self-sufficient communities uh, as fossil fuels become less available. Or maybe uh, you're having economic uh, hardships like we all are with food prices right now and you want to grow more of your own potatoes. This video is especially for you guys. So uh, today I'm going to show two methods of growing potatoes and why I recommend one over the other. If you want to read all about our research on potatoes, go to lowtechinstitute.org research and click on the potato study. And you can see there our results uh, growing five different methods and why I'm recommending what I do. Today I'm going to be talking about two methods, both of which can be used in established beds like this, or if you're colonizing a lawn to make more garden space, um, I'm going to recommend uh, one of the methods for that. Uh, but we'll start with traditional trench and hill. Trench and hill is probably how you've planted potatoes before or seen potatoes planted. Uh, basically it means digging a trench, putting the potatoes in the bottom, putting compost on top of them, filling them back up, and then as they grow through the season you hill them up. This method's fine, uh, but it is not what I'm going to recommend today. Trench and hill is a lot of work and I'm lazy, that's why I don't do it. Uh, for both methods, both trench and hill and surface planting, which is the second one I'll talk about, um, I'm doing rows that are about three feet, two and a half, three feet apart, and the potatoes are all spaced out a foot. That stays the same no matter what method I'm doing. So for trench and hill, uh, basically what I'm doing is digging a four to six inch deep trench setting the soil next to it and I'll take my seed potatoes and I'm going to put them in one at a time and use my foot as a planting gauge to give me a foot then each potato gets about a quart of compost and then it gets buried back up as the plants emerge then I would hoe uh, all the weeds and everything that's growing between the rows, I would hoe that back up um, and cover these over. This is the traditional way of growing potatoes. I'm not recommending this. This takes twice as much work per pound of yield. In our trials, we found that for every pound of potatoes you get out of here, you have to work twice as much as the next method I'm going to show you. This method also produces a little bit more uh, than the next method I'm going to show you, about 25%. So if your space is very finite, very limited, and you want to grow as many potatoes as you can in a finite space, then I guess this method, but you're going to be working twice as hard to get it. What I'd recommend, if you have the space, just plant a little bit more of the next method and get the potatoes for half the work. Okay, now let's look at method two. And method two requires cardboard, as much cardboard as you can get. And if you are in a city or a place where you can go to an appliance store and get uh, refrigerator boxes, that's the best stuff I've found uh, because they're big boxes. They don't have uh, glossy uh, printing on them, which can put leach chemicals into your soil. They don't have staples, which uh, don't degrade and they usually you know, stick into your boot or your foot, um, and they don't have, uh, they don't have a tape which will not biodegrade and will end up in your soil and you have to dig it out the next year. So, this method relies on cardboard as a weed barrier. And you could certainly use this with trench and hill. You could put down cardboard and reduce the amount of weeding you have to do, but then it's hard to hill because you don't have access to the soil. So, this method works either on established beds like this one, or if you're colonizing a lawn to turn it into a garden, this works well. Um, and I'll talk about the differences. Um, so in an established bed like this, what I want to do is make rows of cardboard between my uh, rows of potatoes. So my potato rows are going to be here, here, and there. So I want to put down cardboard here and here. Now, if you're an experienced lasagna gardener, meaning you use cardboard as a weed barrier often, you might be noticing that I'm not overlapping these. If I were on a lawn, I would want to make sure that there is no space where the grass comes up. I just rake this down, but if I was on a lawn, I would mow it as low as I possibly can, and then mow it again as low as that mower will go. And then I would put down cardboard just like this, except on a lawn, I would 
cover these up and have at least three or four inches of overlap and then I would do another layer. I would do two layers of cardboard on grass. Here, I can get away with just putting it in the rows between the potatoes and then I'm gonna plant the potatoes in the exposed soil here. This is just a weed barrier and it's such a good weird weed barrier that I probably won't have to weed for most of the season. Excuse me while I run and get a little more cardboard. My cardboard is half composted already. I would maybe consider another a layer. Just because it's so composted, it might not hold the weeds back as well as I'd like. Now as you can see, I've got two rows of cardboard. And here's where I'll plant, and here's where I'll plant, and there's where I'll plant. If this were just an open field, not raised beds, I would just do this over and over and over. Cardboard, 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 at three foot spacings. Now, I can plant my potatoes right on top of the soil. So much easier. These are red Norlands, in case you're curious. If I were planting on a lawn, and this were, and there was no soil to plant in, I would still plant at three foot spacings with one foot between each potato. And then I would just plant right on top of the cardboard. And today I can probably get away with one quart, maybe two quarts of compost, and then maybe another quart partway through the growing season. If I'm planting just on top of the cardboard to colonize a lawn, then I would probably give them two quarts of compost now and another quart partway through the season. The best part about this method is the harvest. At harvest time, instead of having to dig up all those potatoes that I trenched in, these will be right on the surface. All I have to do is pull back the rotted cardboard and pull the potatoes out. All right, so now that they are uh, covered in compost, now I'm gonna put straw or, um, or mulch on them. Uh, I don't wanna put wood chips on them. Wood chips draw nitrogen out of their environment to, uh, to decompose, and so I wanna put straw or some other kind of grassy type mulch on top of this. Another reason that straw is good is it keeps the soil temperature low. By keeping the soil temperature low, these are going to um, reproduce better because potatoes stop producing when the soil temperature gets above 80, 85 degrees. So I wanna keep that nice and cool. Another thing that the mulch does, unlike the trenching hill, it holds in moisture. It's just all around a better way to do it. Do not skimp on this. It helps keep the potatoes from turning green also. If you have to buy straw bales, make sure it's clean of pesticides and all that and um, herbicides and all that. And then make sure that you wet it down really nice before you put it on. I would use a, a whole bale for this bed, which is 20 feet and it's three rows. Now you can see me walking on this and I'm compressing it and I don't care because it's not gonna be grown on this year. I'm actually trying to inhibit growth here. So now what I'm gonna do is add wood chips here on the cardboard and that'll help keep the cardboard down, keeps moisture in the soil, helps suppress weeds. Also, usually I chit these potatoes or let them pre-sprout. I didn't this year because I'm doing this early. This is the first bed I'm doing. I'm doing it a little earlier than I usually would to make this video so that hopefully it gets to you in time for you to plant potatoes this season. Now I would be remiss if I didn't mention that this research was funded by the USDA Sustainable Agriculture Research Education Grant, a SARE grant, and that grant ran up in 2018. So now, things like this, this video, uh, is something that we do to try and get our information and useful, helpful tips out uh, to the public. And that takes staff resources to do. So if you're in a position to help us out, uh, please head over to Patreon. It's patreon.com slash lowtechinstitute and throw us a couple of bucks. Subscriptions start as low as $3 a month and that really helps us defray the cost of our staff time to put out videos like this. The more donations and help we get from folks like you, uh, the more videos we can put out. And this is chaff from last, week, last year's wheat harvest. And if you want to learn about growing your own wheat, we're having a class later this summer on growing your own wheat. If you go to our website, you can sign up for our listserv and you'll be told about classes before they happen and how you can sign up. Wheat prices will be going up this fall and that's probably gonna be the topic of our next podcast. So again, if you're not subscribed to our podcast or our YouTube page, please subscribe now. 
Uh, just uh, search for the Low Tech Podcast in your podcast app or on YouTube.